Yeah. Good question. Uh, Stan Borowski from Glenn Research Center. Uh, your comment about the nuclear rockets, for example, uh, you, you said they were heavy, and uh, that is definitely a fact. Nuclear engines have a tendency to be heavier than chemical systems, but the fact you get a 100% increase in ISP over the best chemical rockets that we have today, you wind up saving hundreds, hundreds of metric, to, metric tons of propellant on these, you know, six-month you know, transits back and forth. So, you know, when you think about it, you really have to think not just of an engine, uh, the engine is only one piece of the overall stage in the system. So uh, that's one thing, I didn't want the audience to kind of think that nuclear rockets are somehow just too heavy and that they have radioactivity in them. When you launch them, they're relatively clean and there is more radioactivity in the three RTGs that were on Cassini, uh, on Cassini's three RTGs than there are in three 25,000 pound thrust nuclear rocket engines to send humans to Mars. Okay, that seems surprising. Um, but um, okay, well, I, if if it's really such a such a small amount of uh, radioactive material, then then maybe uh, that that could work for an upper stage of a rocket. Um, I, you know, it, it just if, if I, I think it's 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 a it's a tough. Uh, Thing to, to do for, from I, I, I'm scared of doing that with, with the public basically if other people may be braver than I am but I, I, I think if I were to raise the idea of, of launching thousands of you know nuclear powered rockets uh, there would be people trying to lynch me um, well remember we're not launching I mean when you launch them they're they're inert they're safe they've got control drums in and there's very, I mean, it's just natural uranium. There's no radioactive fission products because the engine hasn't been turned on yet. So it's only once they're up in space in a stable orbit that you can unlock the inner lock control drums and then start bringing the power up. So NASA's looked at a lot of this okay. stuff, you know, for quite some time. But what if it, what if it crashes, though? Sorry? What, what if uh, there's a launch failure? Well, there, there certainly could be a launch failure, but the stage is located way up on the top. It's not in a cargo bay like on the shuttle where they're worried about implosions or collapses and okay. a lot of heat. So, and again, like I said, even if it were to disperse and break open the, the core, the, the fuel is, uh, there's little, virtually little radioactivity in it all because it's never been operated. Okay. Uh, that, that sounds like it could be a better option than I thought. Okay. Well, we'd like to talk to you more about it in the okay. future. Thanks. All right. Yeah, I'm certainly open to... to um, if, if new different ideas, and um, that that's certainly different than I thought it was. Right. Uh, yeah, no, it, it, it's actually surprising. I mean, there's obviously this nuclear-powered craft uh, right here in San, you know, San Diego. So, um, and no, nobody seems to get too alarmed about that. Uh, nuclear-powered submarines and, and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, perhaps perhaps the, the public concern is is uh, le less than I think it is. Um, people people do seem to get alarmed about establishing a nuclear reactor uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, on, on the ground. Uh, and uh, in the past, they've been upset about nu nuclear launches, but uh, maybe there's, if a clear case can be made that it's safe, then, then maybe it's a good way to go. Um, yeah, you know, I love the idea of fusion. I think um, fusion is, 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 is awesome. Um, and uh, I, I mean, if, if somebody were to do that, that would be very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, we need to make fusion work on the ground, you know, uh, in, in an energy positive way first, but um, which in and of itself would be a huge boon for humanity. Uh, and um, yeah, so yeah, it'd be tremendous if somebody sorted that out.
Well, our, our main goal is to, um, to establish a means of, of getting to and from Mars. Um, and, and then I think if, if, that, if there's that ability, then that, that will open up opportunities for you know, many organizations and many, many, many facets. So it's, uh, uh, it's kind of like, you know, if you, can get, if you can get the Union Pacific Railroad across the country, then think of all the businesses that prospered in California. Um, but, but in the absence of a means of getting there, then there's no opportunity for businesses to, or, or organizations to flourish um, on the other side. So, it's, so that's, our focus is really just, can, can we establish that trans transportation uh, link and, and then keep uh, iterating and innovating to make it better and better? Um, that's, that's our sole focus, really. Um, yeah. I was wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit about the relationship between government and private industry in getting to Mars. Well, I, I think it's definitely going to be a, a joint effort. Um, and uh, you know, even as it is, uh, in, in terms of the progress that SpaceX has made thus far, um, I mean, we would not be where we are today without NASA. I mean, NASA has been a, a key uh, part of, of our success, um, and um, and will continue to be. Uh, and uh, obviously, we're, we're hopeful that uh, uh, the Air Force and NRO will, will you know, will, will become a partner as well. Um, so uh, it, it's yeah very much a joint joint effort, um, and uh, ho hopefully other companies too. I mean, it, it's uh, it, it, it's not as though I, I think it should just be SpaceX. I think there need to be you know m multiple entities that are that are doing that transport. What kind of cost per kilogram of orbit do you think we should get down to make our architecture viable? How far away are we the question was, uh, what, what cost uh, per, per, per pound or per, per kilogram do we need to get below in order to make uh, Mars viable? I mean, is it, so I think in order to make a self-sustaining civilization possible on Mars, we have to get the cost uh, per pound well, uh, well under $100, per cost per pound to orbit well under $100, probably closer to $50. Um, now, the thing is that uh, Falcon Heavy, uh, the cost per pound to orbit uh, on an expendable basis uh, is about $1,000. So if we can make Falcon Heavy reusable, uh, depending upon how much uh, payload we lose in the process of making it reusable, um, that, that, could make, that, that could get to that number. Um, so. Uh, we'd, we'd have to basically improve it by about a tenth, a uh, factor of 10. Um, maybe to, well, 20 to get down to the $50 point. Um, and when you consider that the cost of the propellant is you know, about 0.3% of the cost of the rocket, uh, or 1 300th, uh, then it's, you know, as long as it should be, it should be possible to do that even with, with a Falcon Heavy. Um, but this will take a, this will take a, lot, a long time to get. It's a long time by, by definition, meaning like several years. <laughs> uh, sure. Are you are you considering architectures where you have an interplanetary vehicle that once up always stays up say between Earth and Mars, and then on each end you have descent ascent vehicles which are like. Uh, uh, taxis, or if you will, right. rental cars, uh, to get you to the major. Yeah, I, I, I think I think long term there probably is some architecture where there are smaller craft that uh, take you to Earth orbit, do back and forth from Earth orbit and Mars orbit, and then there's some sort of much larger ship that's that's circulating or ships that are circulating between uh, Earth and Mars. Uh, I think that's by longer term. I mean, I think that so that's you know. In, in, in several decades from now, I think that's probably the right thing. But in the interim, I think it's probably going to be a more like it's a one, one ship that takes you to Mars and back. Um, I, I think that that's kind of the short to medium term solution. Um, and now the nice thing is that as soon as you have a base on Mars, um, you've got a forcing function for improving the, uh, the transportation technology. Uh, just like when, you know, before the the United States colonies were established, um, there was no forcing function for improving trips across the Atlantic. 
uh, but, but when they were, then suddenly there was a need to have those trip, shifts be better and better every year. Um, you know, and, and so ship technology improved dramatically uh, uh, because of that forcing function. I think the same will occur if there is a, uh, a base on Mars. Hi, I'm Matt Flaschik. Um, I was curious about to establish the initial base on Mars to get that initial thrust. Do you think it'll be mostly government funding? Do you think it'll be private and government, or it'll be like an X Prize sort of thing? <laughs> be a hell of an X Prize. <laughs> um, I, I, I think it's I think it's some combination of government and private, um, and uh, yeah, uh, it's hard to say exactly what percentage, but I think I, th I think it's a pretty sure bet that it'll be a combination of government and private enterprise. Um, Unlikely to be an X Prize, but there may be elements of it that are X Prize ish. So, um, so once you begin uh, sending uh, people up into to space and until it becomes a sort of uh, mostly commercial endeavor, do you, uh, I assume mostly you'll be uh, sending uh, NASA astronauts up to the, the space station. Do you have any uh, missions that uh, you're specifically interested in? And would you be training like your own astronauts, or would it mostly be using uh, NASA to, to do those sorts of things? Well, uh, I mean, NASA would be our customer as far as transporting people to the space station is concerned. So it would really be a um, decision of, of NASA as to who, who goes on. Um, and uh, I mean, I think it's going to be NASA, NASA astronauts um, that, that, go, that fly on, on those trips. Uh, it will be whoever our customer decides. It's sort of, you know, it's, it's like, buy, like uh, buying a flight of an airplane or something. It's up to the customer to decide. But I think we will also have... Um, private uh, astronauts that want to fly um, either to a private space station or maybe on uh, trips around the Earth or conceivably a loop around the moon. All right. Um, thank, thank you very much. Let me, uh, let me thank Elon for, for a very stimulating presentation and question and answer. And of course, to thank you for your time and also your service and support of this conference, we have the coveted AA coin. <laughs> Thanks. So, thank you so much. All right, thank you. And that concludes this keynote. Thank you all very much.